Traumatic brain injury is an injury that occurs to somebody's head because of a jolt or a strike or a bump or in some cases a fall. And it affects the functioning of the brain and, and sometimes the uh, impact of the injury to the brain can be relatively minor, but in other cases it can be very, very serious. NIOSH conducted a study in that area and showed that between 2003 and 2010, there were roughly 2,200 fatalities related to traumatic brain injuries, and that represented about 25% of all fatalities during that time period. And a good portion of those injuries occurred during falls from elevation. Wearing a more protective hard hat can be important during a struck by incident or even during a fall incident because it can reduce the severity of the injury that the worker sustains. NIOSH is the sole federal government agency that's conducting research on traumatic brain injuries that are impacting workers in the workplace. The International Safety Equipment Association is a member of the Nora Construction Sector Council, and a lot of their members are manufacturers of hard hats and helmets that are being used in the construction industry. And so we've been working with them as a partner in conducting this research and also getting the word out about the findings and the benefits of using the more modern helmets in protecting workers. Today in the U.S., the head protection standards are standardized by the ISCA. ISCA is a consensus group that writes standards that OSHA adopts. If you're on a job site that creates an overhead hazard where an item could fall on your head, then you must provide a worker with a hard hat. Z89 is the recognized standard in the U.S. today for all head protection. In fact, Z89 is commonly used around the world in different countries uh, that do not have their own set of standards. Within the Z89 standards, there's different types and classes, depending on the work environment to help the worker choose which hard hat is appropriate for them. In the US, the Z89 standard, that's what a traditional style hard hat was made for, because you're gonna take the helmet, condition it, and you're gonna impact it at the top. For workers that are looking for overhead hazards, such as a dropped object, a type one helmet is perfectly fine to use. Uh, if a worker is going to go into more of an area where they could be on maybe a fall arrest system where they could actually break loose, you're going to want a true type 2 helmet for that side protection. If a worker is at heights, for example, working on scaffolding and they're worried about a slip, trip, or fall or on maybe drywall stilts, this helmet's going to stay on your head with the integrated chin strap. The difference between them is typically on a type 1, you're only going to have some type of suspension like this. On a type two helmet, you're gonna have foam that comes up all the way to the edge of the helmet because of how the helmet is tested. And then you're also gonna have a little bit of a suspension system there as well. On the safety helmets that have become popular, you're gonna see a lower profile helmet and then if you turn it over and look on the inside, you're gonna have the chin strap here, an integrated chin strap. Sometimes you might have a suspension, but most of the time you're not, but you're also gonna have a foam liner. But as you can see, this foam liner does not go all the way up to the edges like a true type two. So the foam liner right there isn't quite as far up as what a type two is. These are meeting what's called a European standard, 12492. Those do have some side protection, but still different than a type two hard hat. So we are starting to see a shift in the U.S. from uh, a traditional hard hat to a safety helmet. However, I would pause and want people to really look at the risk assessment that they're seeing on the job site. For example, you might have 100 employees on your job site, but only 20 of those are working at True Heights, where they might need a helmet with an integrated chin strap to make sure the helmet is staying on their head. The other 80 employees that are on the job site they might only be looking at a dropped object, so a true type one hard hat is gonna be sufficient for them. ISCA is looking at the European standard, specific clauses within the performance criteria to incorporate as potentially an optional standard or other standards within the Z89 next revision of the standard cycle. As I said, we are a consensus body, so we are looking at, does this make sense? Where should it be incorporated at into the standard? And lastly, is it truly what the end users are looking for in terms of making sure that their workers get home safely at the end of the day?